Today's Drama Fest video is about Nefisto, pictured on screen. He's an unhinged billion power, Kraken and Karen, in Rise of Kingdoms who previously tried to leverage his livelihood to threaten mine. And remember, at the end of our previous exchange, I said in a video, I would be happy to fully reset on our relationship if he was, which, given the circumstances, I thought was pretty generous. Remember, he implied that he would leverage his wealth and spending on other Lilith games in order to try to get them to cancel their sponsored videos with me, okay? Now, to his credit, maybe he didn't actually follow through with that because to this day, I still am sponsored for some number of videos on my channel. So either he failed to execute or he didn't actually follow through. Either way, it doesn't really matter because despite all of this, I offered him parlay. I said, hey, let's reset the relationship, but Nefisto seems to do what he does best. I mean, he literally cannot hide his true nature even when he's live streaming and trying to present as being buttoned up. In a live stream on Laxist Gaming's YouTube channel, um, I can only assume his goal was to try to present his kingdom as having been treated unfairly in this KVK um, and having been a victim uh, of the behavior of these other kingdoms. He basically invited me to participate in the drama by saying the following. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, Chisgo, suck my nuts. Now, look, where possible, I try to prescribe to the wisdom of greater YouTubers than myself. And according to Penguinzo, also known as Charlie, um, who's got over 12 million subs, after an exchange of insults, it's correct etiquette to kind of let the rivalry stay contained to those previous videos, and we all kind of move on with our lives. But since Nefisto directly invited me back into this conversation, I'll take this opportunity to once more enter the big top to watch the clowns entertain us. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, do me a huge favor and toss a like on the video. Drama videos like this one always take more work and are a good bit more stressful than my regular commander guidance videos. So thank you for honoring my commitment to your entertainment by just tossing a like on the video. But now that we've completed possibly the longest intro I've done in a video in a very long time, let's put on our swimming caps like Scrooge McDuck and dive right in to the vault of treasure because there are so many things to talk about with Nephisto's current KVK. It took me many hours to really understand what I believe is the truth of the situation with Nephisto's KVK season three. And I feel like the best way to summarize this is with a meme. Here's how we can understand Nephisto's KVK in the blink of an eye. Um, Nephisto's kingdom tried to add another ally without consulting the allies they already had. Uh, Nephisto's kingdom then claimed the Zig using very questionable data, and then they fought their own allies for the Zig because they challenged them and their allies said, fine, challenge accepted. Then, when Nephisto's kingdom lost the Zig and they were removed from King's Land, they took to the internet to basically insult everybody else after they've been evicted. This is a pretty clean summary of what I think has happened, but rather than take my word for it, and because Nephisto has attacked my journalistic integrity, which I really never kind of claim to have, let's go right to the source. My conversation with one of the officers from this KVK to give the details with evidence of what took place over the course of of this KVK season three. The following is my conversation with King. As I mentioned, an R4 in one of the kingdoms in this KVK, I deeply appreciate the time and commitment they took to share with me all of the information I would need from this KVK to make this video. And he did give me permission to use our conversation as a part of this video. So again, a huge shout out to King for providing this information. And by the way, I did spend hours of my time listening to information presented by Nephisto's kingdom as well. But, um, you know, guidance I received a very long time ago when I worked in a, in a you know, a consulting job and in an office setting um, was that you should never argue with an idiot because it's very hard to tell on the outside which person is the idiot. And when I looked in to what Nephisto's kingdom is saying and what um, King and their kingdoms were saying, it is difficult to understand, like, what's true and what isn't true. But since we already know the nature of Nefisto, it was easier to step into this conversation because I knew which side was likely to hold the truth. And based on what King has shared, that for me was very much confirmed. So let's go through here and review the evidence provided by King and the 
conversation around what exactly happened. So King messaged me when there were 15 hours left for the zig to open, and I said, hey, maybe the best place to start here is just a really simple version of what happened in this KVK, and then we can explore the details. And he says, before all of this drama, Nephisto's kingdom, that's 2831, sent out a mail that they formed a new ally with another kingdom, and they let them into King's Land. Now, this is a little bit unusual. Remember, Light versus Darkness, KVK Season 3, you already have preset allies. There's literally not a reason in the world to take on another ally. Your allies are predefined for you better than most KVK formats. I think the only other KVK format that defines who your allies are and are not more cleanly, perhaps, is the Nile version of KVK. However, it's not uncommon for weirdness to happen in KVK seasons one through three, and here we are with weirdness. Now, what this means, I believe, is that this became a five versus three in Kingsland, and essentially what happened here is the first part of the meme that I shared with you. Um, Nephisto's kingdom add in an ally without consulting the rest of their existing allies about that happening. And so I say, what were the original allies? The original allies and enemies are listed on the screen here, but I'll save you the trouble and just say, this is the four kingdoms that you're supposed to be allied with at the start, okay? Um, really, I guess it's your kingdom and three others, but you get the idea. So he says, I'll give you the brief details and we'll break it with you uh, with screenshots and links. The recent development in KVK3 specifically regarding the ziggurat captured based on DKP as agreed upon by Kingdom 6 and 31. I represent Kingdom 6 and I'm a member of the council. Okay, so let me break this down. What they basically said, and by the way, I don't know when it became KDP. Maybe I'm just old and it was always dragon kill points. So maybe this is like kill death points or I, I don't know. Um, DKP is a system where you get points. And in this case, um, King and also Nephisto's kingdom had agreed that the person who would get the zig was the kingdom with more contribution. OK, that's an oversimplification of what is being discussed here. OK, and as of the latest pass eight openings on March 3rd, our kingdom stats showed some total uh, T4 kills and some T5 kills and some dead troops. He offered the stats over here. Now, the next thing he says is that he's been in conversation with Mike Pence from Kingdom 2831. Now, Mike Pence, you may know as a political figure from the United States of America, as the vice president of Donald Trump. There's some weirdness there that honestly I'm not qualified to unpack. I'll just simply reiterate that I think it's super weird to, uh, to associate with Mike Pence here, okay? But whatever the king of 2831, Mike Pence, says, according to him, they scanned their data on March 3rd. However, we have noticed some discrepancies in their data, particularly with the top five MGE players. For instance, if we use the in-game math, Nephisto should have had a billion points, but according to the data provided by Kingdom 2831, Nephisto had more than a billion points, okay? So what he's basically explaining is that they've got this agreement that the team that's going to get the zig is the one with more contribution. And for some reason, Nephisto's kingdom is showing they have more contribution than what other data sources say they should. It looks fishy, okay? Despite our inquiries, Pence insisted that their data was correct and that they fought Kingdom 2827, which allegedly had 75% T5 players. But we collected the data from 2827 and 2805 that casts doubts on this claim. King continues to say, I believe it's critical we resolve these discrepancies and ensure that all parties have access to accurate and reliable data. Um, if not, we're preparing the upcoming war based on this data. And there's something very important that you'll notice here, which is that this is rockboard.com. Let me zoom it in. Rockboard.com is a very popular site for getting data. Now, I can't claim whether or not it is the most accurate data in the world, but I will say that this is the source I trust the most for getting information about how kingdoms have performed, both at a player level and a kingdom level, in fact. So when King's Kingdom is saying they're using rockboard.com as the source, that to me feels pretty ironclad compared to other alternatives. Maybe it's wrong, but I would be very surprised if that was the case. Now, King continues to explain 
that 2831 basically had their own bot that collected their stats. This is the custom stat bot and the results of it um, from Nephisto's kingdom. And the thing is that like, theoretically in a Google sheet, couldn't you manipulate the data if you wanted to ever so slightly elevating the kill points of your own kingdom so that you could then have enough kill points to claim you defeated the other kingdom in terms of contribution? To me, that's basically the core of the argument between these kingdoms, okay? One kingdom is saying, our data is from rockboard.com, and we're really sure it's right. And we've even got ways to prove that your data's probably got some errors. Can we reconcile? That's what's happening. As mentioned earlier, King explains, we figured out their data had some sus suspicious numbers. For example, their top five MGE players are listed with contribution, as you see here. And if we use the game math, Nefisto has a billion points, but from the data provided by 2831, Nefisto was listed as 1 billion and 50 million. So that's a 50 million boost almost. It's a 49 and a half million boost from his actual score. And of course, that doesn't sound like that much in the grand scheme of things, except if you were to put a boost like that onto uh, some, you know, a lot of players, that could be a big deal. It's kind of like the movie Office Space, okay? Spoiler alert, but it's a really old movie. But you add a penny on to each transaction and all of a sudden it adds up really quickly. In addition, King explains to me that they collected data from 2827 and 2805 to try to really understand what was happening. So King, who is previously one of Nefisto's allies, is saying like, hey, um, we looked at data from a number of places, including... Enemy kingdoms have provided their data, and this doesn't quite seem right. Can we reconcile? So as I was saying, I ask, what's the significance of all this contribution data? Is that, you know, how the zig is being determined? And he says, yes, basically we decide who has more DKP and they take the star. And now 2831 is making false statements about their stats because they want the star. And so we want to let the rock community know. And I say, okay, so 2831 allied another kingdom without discussing with their existing allies did the rest of your group honor this alliance with the new kingdom that Nefisto had brought in? Also, do the discrepancies uh, in the data make a difference between who would get the zig? So in response to my asking, hey, did the rest of your group honor this alliance with the kingdom that Nefisto has, has sort of added in? And he says, no, 2831, that's Nefisto's kingdom, allied with 2814 without discussing with our group. He also clarifies, to my point, do the discrepancies in the data make the difference between who would get the zig? And the answer was yes. What a coincidence that Nefisto's kingdom is using a homegrown stat tracker that happens to conflict with all the other data that's been available and happens to get them the zig. Wow. That's just, you know, either a happy error or... Gosh, all these other data sources are perhaps wrong. King continues and says, we didn't honor the new ally and new alliance. And I say, so did you fight against that new ally? And he says, yes, because we know they're tampering with their data, so we didn't honor it. I ask some clarifying questions about like, hey, did you have flags near this new kingdom that, you know, uh, suddenly became an ally? And he says, yes. Um, and when Nephisto's kingdom saw you fighting this new ally they brought in, did they stop you? And uh, he says, uh, we already forced 2814. That's the kingdom that Nephisto allied out of King's Land. And Nephisto's kingdom actually stayed neutral in the conflict. So basically, Nephisto's kingdom alone ended up with this extra ally that the rest of the allegiance, uh, the rest of his, you know, warband didn't honor. This was the mail sent out by Nephisto. And I should really clarify, Nephisto was not technically the king of the kingdom. They have him in that spot to gem kingdom buffs, as I understand it, and to gem king skills. Uh, but he theoretically is not in leadership, although given that he's not in leadership, he sure does have a lot to say. Um, he says, hi, as you can see, we've almost reached this KVK, and there are probably still a lot of people wondering why 14 are our allies and help us in King's Land. Okay, this is the, the kingdom they added as an ally. It's a long story and we'll explain it later. Currently, our allies, after crazy deals, are as follows for KVK rewards. O4 are still nominally our allies because they're in the same camp as us. So it's strictly forbidden to attack anyone from O4. I hear a lot of people in Lost Kingdom chat or somewhere said that 14 was paid by Nefisto to help us. I will confirm I didn't spend a single dollar on this. 14 have been treated unfairly by O5 and they came to us to claim justice. Now, that is actually super believable that the reason 
this kingdom is defecting from their um, game-provided allies is because they feel like they were treated unfairly. That happens all the time. So I'm actually not questioning that at all. Um, the reason that this kingdom wanted to join with Nephisto and Nephisto's allies um, is probably genuine. However, the thing Nephisto, I think, and his kingdom needed to do was really make sure everybody was on board. Now, they may claim that they did that, but here I am talking to King, who's like, guys, we had we didn't know this was going to happen. At this point, Nephisto's kingdom declares war on King and his kingdom. Here is where you can see that declaration of war happens. The Pence says, stop this trash talk. Let's fight. What are you scared of? Now, look, I know this isn't actually Game of Thrones, but if a king of a kingdom in a Game of Thrones universe said, let's fight, that means a declaration of war. That's what that is. So, um... He said, let's fight, and King's Kingdom is like, okay, let's go, bruh, and they kicked him out of King's Land. GG. So basically, in case anyone's unclear, this is the evidence provided by King that Nephisto's Kingdom had already said, let's fight over Zig. Literally, stop the trash talk, let's fight, what are you scared of, is what the Pence, aka Mike Pence, I believe is how he's being referred to, has said. Like, war declared. That's it. Right there. And look, I'm sure Nefisto's kingdom would say something like, oh, those were just, you know, like, it, it was just heated conversation. It's not actually a declaration of war. But, like, you got to understand that that could easily be perceived as you just declared the war and invited the fight because you literally have done, I mean, that that's how I would interpret that, okay? And I get that maybe Pence is just being a little hot-headed, but you cannot blame the opposing kingdom for fighting you when you said, let's fight, what are you scared of? That's like the most open invitation for a battle that I've ever seen. So I say, keep me posted on how it's going. And he says, yes, sure. Now one of the Nephisto Kingdom's council members wants to stop the war. We'll see where it's going. We're talking with Laxist and Nephisto in a live stream. And King then says, they're out of King's Land. And I say, to clarify, you kick Nephisto out of King's Land? And he says, yes. In summary, Kingdom 2831, that's Nephisto's kingdom, entered into alliance with 2814, which subjected us to attacks from both flanks. Subsequently, our kingdom, 2806, formed a strategic partnership with 2805, resulting in the successful expulsion of Kingdom 31 by 05 and our own removal of Kingdom 14 out of King's Land. I say GG. So let me show you what this map looks like so you can see it all in game. So this is Nephisto's fort getting rallied right now just outside of King's Land. It looks like the passes became uh, unprotected. So the Zone 6 invasions can begin here. So Nephisto now has to defend their starting zone. And if I zoom way out, the kingdom in purple is King's Kingdom. That's the person that I've been chatting with. Now, theoretically... Left and right side of this map should be allies, and top side and bottom side of this map should be allies, but things always get super freaking weird, okay? So it looks like a bunch of kingdoms have sort of defected in really interesting ways. Uh, the kingdom up north in red and in pink seem to be allied, so now it's orange, purple, red, pink and dark blue and they're fighting against teal which is nephisto green uh and it looks like uh yellow is basically capped at this point so i don't know man there's a lot of betrayal that happens in kvk season three it would have been really simple however if the way this kvk had unfolded is if the people that started as allies stayed as allies because those are the game-provided allies. That's like how it's literally supposed to be played. But I'll add on top of that, that the thing that made this explode into a rough situation, where Nephisto was ultimately removed from King's Land, is because Nephisto's kingdom had questionable data. Rather than actually reconcile the data, they said, let's just fight over it. And so they were taken up on their offer. Now they're out of King's Land. GG. If you're looking for more information about my relationship with Nephisto and those former videos, I'll have cards in the end screen in just a moment. Nephisto's main beef with me, strangely enough, 
is that when someone impersonated him, I thought I was talking to the real Nefisto. I made a video about it, and he's just so upset about that video. But if you want to see him be totally unhinged in accusing me of being just this great criminal, those cards are again in the end screen. And if you want to see Nefisto's interview that he did on stream uh, that I showed a clip of, a link for that will be in the description of this video, uh, and that you'll just hear more of him being unhinged.